Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome again to the course fundamentals and applications of uh, dielectric ceramics. So we will start with a new lecture today again and let us first recap the previous lecture. So the, in the previous lecture we learnt about uh, the polarizability which is mu which relates the dipole moment with the electric field. So, alpha is the polarizability and we did analytical treatment of of electronic polarizability and ionic polarizability and here we found that it is proportional to R Q which means bigger the atom is more polarizable it is and here it is inversely proportional to 1 over y which is the elastic constant. So, more stiff the material is or more the bond energy is lesser it is able to polarize which makes sense I mean stronger materials do not get polarized very uh, easily. So, today what we will do is that we will take a case of uh, what we call as a dipolar polarizability. which is essentially uh, materials uh, which contains for materials which contains uh, dipolar polarization. Let us, so basically this treatment is valid for materials which are polar in nature which means uh, molecules contain a finite dipole moment. So, this would be valid for examples like uh, example would be H 2 O molecule, it is also to some extent valid for things like zinc oxide which is a non centrosymmetric structure. So, any solid which is polar in nature will, will have this uh, analysis valid. So, the reason, uh, so what happens when you have these polar molecules, uh, non-polar molecules, sorry polar molecules is that when temperature is finite and electric field is equal to 0, then let us say the dipole moments are all over the place. So, these are the molecules which are present in the system and as a result of randomization. So, you have basically random dipole distribution and you can sum it as, as if these dipoles are pointing in such a manner. So, that mu is sigma mu is equal to 0. So, third, so Although each of the individual molecule has a finite dipole moment, the system does not have a dipole moment to show for because the thermal randomization lead to uh, zero dipole moment. Now, what happens is that when you apply electric field, so let us say when you have such a system and when you apply electric field, so when you apply electric field to such a system now, so let us say electric field is pointing from positive to negative, which means dipole moments have to align. Uh, sorry, what is this? Which means uh, now dipole moments are from negative to positive. Okay, so this positive of this has to align with the negative of electric field. So if you have a parallel plate capacitor, so negative charges will be in the plates, and then positive charges will have to align with itself. So these have to now so, sort of tilt towards 
the applied electric field. Okay. So, this is already aligned, this will come closer to being and so on and so forth. So, basically the electric field will pull them towards some finite, so that you have net dipole moment now in. So, now when E is not equal to 0, the mu net is also not equal to 0. So, what it means is that in such a state your dipole moment in this direction is bigger and the dipole moment in this direction is smaller. So, this is mu let us say E direction and this is mu which is minus mu right in this direction. So, this so let us not E, but just say so mu so let us say positive negative. So, mu positive being greater than mu negative will give you net dipole moment. So, this is basically you will have to overcome. So, field strength in this case has to be such that so that the field is field is able to overcome the applied uh, the, the, th the thermal energy. So, basically you need to now find how much energy is required to orient this molecule overcoming the thermal energy. So, basically this is a process which is uh, thermally driven process and you need to apply uh, sufficient amount of electric field to overcome this thermal randomization. So, if this is the case uh, basically what it means is that we need to minimize the free energy of the system and free energy consists of enthalpy and entropy terms. So, we need to balance out enthalpy and entropy, but what we will see is that in such a system entropy is little difficult to calculate. So, instead of banking on the entropy, we will take the uh, help of uh, Maxwell distribution, uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution to find out what is the uh, probability of aligning certain number of uh, dipoles with certain amount of energy in the direction of applied field. So, we will in, in fact uh, rely more on the distribution function than on the uh, entropy aspects of it. So, let us say we have a picture like this. So, we have a dipole, uh, we have an electric field which is pointing like this from positive to negative. Then we have a dipole which is pointing from negative to positive. Okay. So, this is your mu, this is E and this mu is attracted towards E. So, this is the angle theta between the two. So, in so basically the, the internal energy of a dipole dipole can be written as let us say u and this u basically is written as uh, minus of mu dot E. Okay. So, if you take E in the opposite direction as we conventionally take, then you have to write it at plus mu E because then cos theta will have. So, basically this will become mu E cos theta. So, in this case when the theta is minus mu E cos theta, so when theta is equal to 0 degree, then mu E would be this u would be negative mu E that is minimum. Okay. Alternatively, you know, if you take the electric field direction opposite, um, just talking about do not don't represent these charges, then you have to take it as plus mu E. So, you have to be careful with the sign uh, as to how you apply the field and uh, how you depict the field. So, basically, the orient this u is basically you can see is a function of theta. Okay. So, we are saying now we have multiple dipoles in the system and we have electric field applied. So, basically, we can depict them as if we have let us say this direction. So, let us say this is the direction of E. So, what basically will mean is that we will have in three dimension a cone of dipoles. So, this is a cone of dipoles at an angle theta with respect to E. So, this is mu, this is E. So, this is basically a cones of dipoles at different thetas will be present now. So, this is one cone of dipole at one theta, you might have another cone of
So, this is another theta, let us say this is theta 1 and so on and so forth. So, what you basically will have in 3 D you will have you will have if you, if you now put it vertically you will have one cone, you will have another cone, you will have another cone and so on and so forth and this will also be true in the other direction okay? because not all the dipoles are going to be uh, oriented in one direction. So, you will have this kind of situation as well. So, basically you if you if you now consider these multiple cones together it will be as if you have a spherical surface created by these cones putting put all together. So, which means you need to carry out integration from all the angles all right. So, now let us consider in, in such a situation a spherical case. So, where we have a situation like this. So, we draw a okay. So, this is the vector E. So, this is let us say the, the first cone at certain angle theta and then you have another cone let us say an angle d theta okay. and so you have this first cone here. This is little, let me just rub it off. And then we have another cone here. Okay, and this angle would be the angle d theta. And if you now project it on a surface of a sphere. So, if it was if you just make it now little three dimensional in nature so basically you will be projecting a sort of uh, if I now zoom this up so let us zoom this up on the surface of a sphere okay. So, on the surface of a sphere we will have an element like this okay. So, which will have these lines connecting all right and so this is let us say one direction this is let us say one direction this is so, let us say this angle is theta, this is d theta, but in this plane in the in the horizontal plane here it will have projection let us say. So, you will have one line here another line here. So, this angle will be phi and this angle will be d phi okay? the two lines that will be coming from top. So, if this angle is d phi this angle will also be d phi. Okay. So, now if you take the projection this distance will become r sin theta. So, this will become r sin theta into d phi and this will be r d phi. So, the solid so the d a for this small element will be r d theta into r sin phi d phi. So, what is the solid angle going to be? So, solid angle will be d a divided by r square this will be equal to sin theta d theta d phi. Okay. So, this is the distance r sin theta d theta this is the distance r d theta take them together the product of these two considering that small element is a square in size uh, or rectangular in size the area of that will be r sin theta into r d theta. So, now basically what we are going to do is that if this is the case we need to consider the number of dipoles first we are first we need to consider. So, this is the schematic diagram that we have drawn here. Now, we need to consider first the number of dipoles
number of dipoles at an angle theta which are equal to n theta and they will also be carrying some energy. So, these are the number of dipoles at an angle theta carrying certain energy corresponding to that angle because angle is energy is angle dependent right so, because we, we have seen it is mu e cos theta. So, basically we need to integrate them for all the angles starting from 0 to 180 degrees. So, this will give us the total internal energy. So, total internal energy will be for all dipoles lying between theta is equal to 0 degree to 180 degree. You take from the south pole and go to the north pole right and this is for all the, so this is for basically n theta into u theta. So, this is for one set of angles and then you need to integrate it from 0 to 180 degree to carry to, to get the all energy completely. So, now let us use the Boltzmann statistics. which allows us to basically uh, minimize the free energy using a distribution function. So, this allows this gives a distribution function and what is this distribution function? Basically, the distribution function is at a given temperature at a temperature T number of dipoles with energy U will be n u theta. So, this will be n u theta. Okay. So, this n u theta is equal to a into exponential of minus of u theta divided by k b t which is the thermal energy and these are the, this is the energy. So, this is basically basically probability of having so many dipoles of energy u theta with respect to q theta. Okay. So, a into exponential of, so if this is the case, so we say a is a constant here and rest is you know k, k b is Boltzmann constant. So, this Boltzmann function, so this equation will provide us the number of dipoles within a given cone, n number of dipoles with energy u theta at an angle theta. So, now let us calculate the uh, component of the dipole moment that is parallel to the applied field. For this we will have to use the solid angle we have just calculated that is d omega. Uh, if we consider the sphere as a unit sphere for the angle range theta to theta plus d theta and then we integrate it from uh, 0 to 180 degree for theta degree theta values of. So, phi is within the plane of the sphere which is from 0 to 360 degree that is 2 pi whereas theta goes from 0 to 180 degree from uh, one side to another side. So, let us do that now. So, what we do is now number of dipoles, number of dipoles between theta and theta plus d theta are equal to n into u theta into d omega. This is the solid angle right. So, the total dipole moment is now is equal to sigma of uh, basically mu which are pointed along the direction of E. So, let us see how do we do that. So, this mu E we know is equal to which is aligned in the direction of light field is n d omega into mu cos theta okay and uh, okay and the uh, so uh, so this is for one particular angle now we average it out so the average let's say mu e bar this mu e bar is calculated as mu e bar is calculated as first you sum up integrate all of them that is n 
u theta into mu cos theta d omega and then you divide it by the number of dipoles. So, this is the total dipole moment for all the dipoles divided by the number of dipoles that will give you the average dipole moment. So, this is again from 0 to pi n u theta into d omega. Now, what is solid angle? Solid angle we have just said is equal to r sin theta uh, sorry sin theta d theta into d phi. Now, if you d phi is basically uh, if you notice d phi is going from it is this incremental angle. Now, if you consider the whole cone what does d theta become? d theta will become equal to 2 pi. So, this will be considered as 2 pi for the whole cone. So, for whole cone I can consider d omega as 2 pi sin theta d theta. I mean you can also integrate for phi from 0 to 2 pi, it is just saying that you are integrating from 0 to 2 pi this will, which will give you basically 2 pi. right? So, so, considering for all the dipoles this is d, 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 uh, for the whole cone d omega is now 2 pi sin theta d theta. So, if you now write this equation again this mu e bar will become 0 to pi 2 thetas will cancel each other when you substitute. So, they will become sin theta cos theta exponential of mu e cos theta divided by k t into d theta divided by uh, 0 to pi sin theta exponential of mu e cos theta divided by k b t let us say here k b t into d theta have we make made a mistake of sign somewhere. Uh, so, this is minus of u theta. So, what was u theta we wrote earlier? u theta is minus of mu e cos theta. Okay. So, it is minus of mu e minus minus cancel each other. So, they will become plus. Okay. So, this is fine. So, now when you, uh, so this is a little tricky to calculate sort of expression. So, in this case, let us say uh, to, to calculate we make an estimation first. So, let us assume a constant beta which is equal to mu e divided by uh, k b t and we take cos theta as equal to x. Okay. So, if you take this cos theta is equal to work, x this will become minus of sin theta d theta and this will become equal to d x. Okay. So, if you make these substitutions in the above equation, we get mu mu e bar is equal to mu into so accordingly the limits will also change. So, they will they will go from plus 1 to minus 1 that is x exponential of beta x dx divided by plus 1 to minus 1 integral exponential of beta x dx. Now, this is uh, expressed by something called as mu into L b beta, where L beta is called as Langevin function. So, this integration is little involved. So, we are not going to details of Langevin function, but Langevin function is defined as L beta is defined as cot hyperbolic beta minus 1 over beta. So, if you wanted to get into derivation of it, you can look at the Langevin function yourself, but the analysis is deriving this into Langevin function is less important, but more important to un understand the implications of this. Now, this cot hyperbolic function is uh, something that you must be aware. So, cot hyperbolic beta can be written as e to the power x plus e to the power minus x divided by e to the power x plus e to the power minus uh, minus of e to the power minus x. Okay. 
So, we are not getting to we are not going to get detail uh, of Langevin function, but let us see the value of this Langevin function for our purposes lie between 0 to 1 and let us see what does it mean. What is the limit of plus 1 uh, this is minus 1 plus 1 to minus 1. So, basically you had from 0 to pi. So, for 0 cos theta will be equal to 1 for cos for pi cos theta will be equal to minus 1. So, yeah, sorry uh, good that you reminded me because this should be minus 1 yeah, same as the numerator. So, now when we plot Langevin function, Langevin function is plotted as so we plot L beta as a function of beta okay. and you plot from 0 to 1 and the way this function is goes is it is something like this. Okay. So, these values are basically you can say asymptotic values. Okay. So, now let us see what does this function mean. So, for very large value of L beta that is L beta tends to be equal to 1 and what does what did we define beta as beta was equal to if you know mu e divided by k t. So, beta was equal to mu e divided by k b t. So, for a given system mu is constant mu is cannot be very large k b t is a constant at a given temperature it is basically what it means is that you have very large E. So, what it means is that when you have very large beta what it means is that large E. Okay. What, it, what it could also mean is that very small could also mean very low temperature. Okay. So, for a, high, for a reasonably high temperature it could mean very high field and for uh, it could also mean uh, very low temperature and could also be some combination of both of them. So, for these values we see that L beta is tending to 1 or L beta is closer to 1. Whereas, for very small that is uh, beta less than 1. So, these values basically, so here it may be little, so at the very low values you tend to have sort of uh, very sharp change and slope, but so here you draw the values 1. 2, 3. So, generally L beta is taken greater than 1 uh, because for small values uh, you cannot use that function for the purposes that want to use. So, for beta less than 1 the that is uh, for high temperatures we consider the slope as. So, this, this line was drawn as for 1 the slope will be as about 1 over 3. So, the slope will be approximately uh, it will be 1 over 3 for beta tending to 0 and hence you are approximating this L beta as 1 over 3 beta. In general uh, we will consider beta which is much smaller than 1, but of course greater than 0. Okay. So, as a result uh, from this we consider, so we have this for general cases of L beta that is 1 over 3 beta somewhere less than 1, but greater than 0. So, L beta greater L beta is equal to 1 over 3 beta. So, mu E bar is now approximated as mu E bar we have written as uh, that was equal to mu into L beta. So, this will be equal to mu into beta divided by 3 and what is mu uh, sorry um, huh, what is beta? beta is mu e divided by 3 into k t. So, this becomes 1 over 3 mu square e divided by k b t. So, here this is the first time that we have seen that and this is equal to alpha into e. So, alpha will be equal to 1 over 3 mu square divided by k b t. So, here for the first time we have seen that the dipolar that the polarizability of the system is inversely proportional to the 
temperature. So, this is alpha E basically or alpha, alpha D we can denominate it as. So, alpha D is equal to 1 over 3 mu square divided by k t. If you have n dipoles in the system, then this will become n divided by 3 mu square divided by k b t into E of course, right n dipoles per unit volume. So, this is the p value. So, basically what it tell what this equation is valid for this equation is very valid for smaller values of dipole moment as well as electric field and large enough temperature. It is not very high temperatures, but not very low temperatures either. So, that is why we say that we are taking this regime which is the regime where L beta is equal to beta divided by 3 and this is basically what it means is that for beta smaller than 1 it means your temperatures are are large, but not uh, very large temperature or it could be in small electric field or mu the dipole moment. So, dipole moment for a given system will be uh, for a molecule it will be fixed, but your electric field will be smaller or temperature will be large enough to cause randomization. So, this is where dipolar polarizability the dipolar polarizability of a given system is inversely proportional to, to temperature and this makes sense as the temperature increases that polarizability will reduce and basically you will have to spend more and more energy in the form of electric field to align the dipoles with the electric field. So, this is the first case where you have temperature dependence as against electronic and ionic polarizability. So, this is sort of a simple analytical treatment of dipolar polarizability uh, based on classical mechanics uh, Boltzmann distribution. So, we will further dwell upon this in the next lecture. Uh, so, uh, where we will just summarize this and then uh, move on to the next topic. Thank you.